those parents, when they got that notice that says, your kids are not coming back to the Quincy School, which is in the middle of Chinatown, but it didn't say where. Mm -hmm. And people were immediately alarmed. From my perspective as a student, my mom being immigrant, and she got the notice, and guess who got to translate the notice was me. I just knew that I was going to the North End. Mm. I did not have any idea that there was all these other concerns of, like, if the kids were safe or not. It was more like, where do I stand? <laughs> where do I find the bus? But we looked after each other. You know, as the teacher of some of the immigrant kids, thinking back and riding those buses when we had to wait for police escorts, I was nervous. But I have to keep calm because of the students are on the bus and how they are feeling. And the same way that when I interpret for all the immigrant mothers, they often look at me like, what do I do now? And I have to pretend that I know what's going on, but I don't. So I learned how to mask how I feel internally. The first day of school when I got off the bus, this brand new school, never even met the principal, he said to me, go to the office and get that phone call from the Justice Department. I'm looking at him, I go, what did I do? They want me to get all the parents together to have a meeting. So it was three days before we actually sat down and met with the representative from the Justice Department. And that representative said to me, well, we really need the Chinese kids back in school because throughout the city, 90% of the Chinese are not in school. Mm. And then she said, we really need them back so they can be the buffer. I'm looking at her, what does that mean? Buffer between the black and white kids in case there's a fight. I said, okay, is that what we're worth? It really toughened me. You know, you were the person at the time that was needed and you stepped up. What drives me is that I need to do everything that I can to help. So I was in the same boats with these mothers and said, we really do need to speak up to the community leaders. And we were told, you guys are immigrant, non-English speaking women who work in factory. You think the government's going to listen to you? This does not concern you because this is a black and white case. You are called others. Yeah. I still think we are the perpetual other. Right. We don't count. So what happened? Why does the outcome is so different from different grouping of people? So something else is at work. You know, that might be 50 years ago, and, that, and, and Chinatown's been here for 150 years. But we are still dealing with similar forces and similar viewpoints to present day. <laughs> 